Hello and welcome to the Music Theory Guy clinic with me, Music Theory Guy. If you've got a question about music theory, this is the place to get it answered. If you'd like to get in touch, you can send me an email or you can contact me via Facebook or Twitter. Now that's precisely what Noel from Melbourne in Australia has done. He's written to me and he wants to know about serialism, specifically how to calculate tone rows. This is part two and in this video I'm going to be explaining how to calculate the inversion and retrograde inversion rows. Let's have a look. Okay, so let's jump straight in and let's have a look at I0. Now, I hope you've had a look at part one of this series of videos about 12-tone technique. And if you did look at part one, you'll know that the letter represents the type of row. And in this case, it's an I, so that means inversion. And the number, that refers to the row transposition, and transposition meaning the moving of notes up or down. But before I explain I0 in detail, I want you to imagine a melody. And these arrows graphically represent that melody. In other words, the first note, when it moves to the next note, it's going up, and then the note stays the same, and then it goes up again, but the next note comes down, and the next note comes down, then it goes up, then it stays the same. So these arrows just represent the movement up or down or staying the same of a melody. Now, that's the original pattern, let's refer to it as, the, the pattern, the movement that that melody is making. Let's have a look at an inverted pattern. So in our original pattern, the first note went to the second note and it went upwards. In our inverted pattern, we're going to go downwards. In the original pattern, the note stays the same and inversion, it stays the same as well. In the original, it goes up, we're going to go down. In the original, it goes down, we're going to go up. In the original, it goes down again, we're going to go up again. In the original, it then goes up, we go down and it stays the same. So, in other words, our inverted pattern is like a reflection. I want you to imagine there's a mirror in between the patterns that I've got there on screen. And the inverted pattern is just a reflection of that original pattern. So let's have a look at this in practice when it comes to I0. So let's just pop I0 down here at the bottom. And let's pop the prime order just back up here. Now, the very first note of I0 is actually going to be exactly the same note as P0. Now, that was the easy bit. To work out the second note of I0, we've got to look at the first and second notes of P0. And we can see that they are C and F sharp. And here they are on a treble clef. You can see the F sharp is higher than the C. So I'm going to highlight a C on my keyboard and we're going to count up to the F sharp. So here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it is six semitones or half steps up from the C to get to F sharp. What we do, we do the opposite. We're going to go down by six semitones or half steps. I'm just going to extend my keyboard a little bit here. So here's a C and we're going to go down by six semitones or half steps. One, two, three, four, five, six and we end up on an F sharp. Now, don't let it put you off that the first two notes of our I0 are exactly the same as the first two notes of P0. It boils down to simple mathematics here. We're looking at a 12 tone row. We just worked out the distance from C to F sharp as being six, six semitones or half steps, six being half of 12. It means whichever direction you go, you're going to end up with exactly the same note. But don't let that worry you. We're gonna carry on and work out the rest of the notes of I0. What is important is that we made two very important steps when we worked out that second note of I0. We actually looked at the direction and we dealt with the distance. Let's look at that in a little bit more detail as we try to work out the third note of I0. Now, to work out that third note, we need to look at the second and third notes of P0, the F sharp and the D. So here they are again on the treble clef. And we can see that this time the F sharp goes down to the D. That's the direction. So I'm just going to make a note of that. So we're going to start on an F sharp on our keyboard and we're going to count how many semitones or half steps it is from the F sharp to the D. So one, two, three, four. It's four semitones or half steps down from the F sharp to the D. So I'm going to make a note of that four. To work out our third note of I zero, we do the opposite of the direction. So we went down from the F sharp to the D. We're going to go up 
to work out our third note of I0. But the distance always remains the same, so it's still be four semitones or half steps. So we're going to go up by four semitones or half steps from the F sharp to work out the third note of I0. So here again is the F sharp on our keyboard, and we're going to go up by four. So one, two, three, four. And we can see that we end up at A sharp. And that's our third note of I0. To work out the fourth note of I0, we need to compare it against the third and fourth notes of P0. And again, we can see that the direction this time, the D goes up to the B. So here's our D on our keyboard. And we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine semitones or half steps up to that B. Remember, we're going to do the opposite of the direction. So we're going to go down, but the distance is going to stay the same. So it stays at nine semitones or half steps. So we need to go down by nine semitones or half steps from A sharp. So here's the A sharp on the keyboard and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We end up at C sharp. So the fourth note of I zero in this case is going to be a C sharp. So if we were to carry on working out the rest of the notes of I0, this is what the row would look like. Now remember to get here, we worked out that I0 is based on or calculated from P0. And we had to use those two steps, the direction and the distance to get here. Remembering that the direction, we do the opposite, the distance, we keep it exactly the same. Now if that's the case for I0, to work out I1, you calculate it from P1, whereas I5, you calculate from P5, I8, you calculate from P8, and so on and so on. Let's now have a look at retrograde inversion or RI rows. Now, if you did watch part one of this series of videos on serialism, you'll know that retrograde is just a seemingly fancy word for backwards. So all that RI0 means is I0 backwards. So at the bottom of the screen in red, I've highlighted I0, whereas now in blue, RI0 is I0 backwards. So the first note of RI0 is an E, then it's a G sharp and a D sharp, whereas for I0, they're actually the last three notes. So if RI0 is just I0 backwards, RI1 is just I1 backwards, RI6 is just I6 backwards, and so on and so on. Okay, well, I hope that's been useful to you, Noel, and anybody else that's been watching. Remember, if any of you have any questions about music theory, please do drop me an email or contact me via Facebook or Twitter. In the meantime, many thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to the Music Theory Guy clinic with me, Music Theory Guy. If you've got a question about music theory, this is the place to get it answered. Now, that's what, what am I talking about? Music theory, that's what I'm talking about.